But I think we now have the champ. I think he now is here. Silas, yes? Hello? There he is. AB, what's up, man? Welcome back. What up? How's I don't it going? Know. I don't know if you heard us. I said uh, I was I was thinking I might have to change the the bio of this show to uh, Brody, Yuli, and AB with how much you're going to be on it right now. You're <laughs> Hopefully like a, we can keep it working every week. You're like you're like a co-host. So I, I got to first start off. Are you are you like have you, do you understand how crazy of a season you're having right now? Um, yeah, when people were throwing these stats at me, it's like I'm in like a boat with like only three other people have ever won first, or I think it was four other people have won three out of the first five. It's just, it doesn't feel like it's really happening. It's just crazy how it's all falling into place. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to act like the, uh, that woman that basically said like Caitlin Clark's scoring record doesn't count because the way she played basketball is like different than the way Caitlin's playing. But, I am going to say like what you're doing. <clears throat> I know other players have done it. Winning three of the first five events this year. It's it's not the same as winning three of the first five events three years ago. It's not the same as winning them five years ago, seven years. The amount of people you have to beat now is so much higher. And so like, to me, this is, I think, and Yuli, I would love for you to jump in. I think this is the best start of anyone's season ever. <laughs> Um, to my recollection, yeah, I don't, I, I don't remember somebody I'm here. Just going off here, of like the difficulty of it. Well, here's what I want to throw in there as well. It's different for these guys who have had winning seasons before. And then they, they practice in the off season. They come in the form, they know how to win. They've done it before. And then they win the three out of the five. Like, I get that you're talking about the climos and the Rickies. Uh, I think Barry was in there maybe for the two of the five. Um, Macbeth, of course, but I've never seen somebody come onto the scene and then just all of a sudden win. <laughs> and then that's just what he does. He you know what I mean? And, and he likes it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the closest thing that I've ever seen to that is when Will Schustrich, his first win ever was the United States disc golf championship. Oh, wow. And then he went on to become the number one player in the world. Um, I think the next year, and that's the closest thing I've ever seen. But even Will wasn't, I don't think he was winning the, at this pace. You know, like you made the reference of Scotty Scheffler after he won the Phoenix Open, all of a sudden now he's the guy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a great reference because I've never seen this before in our, in our game. Yeah. Like, what do you, what do you think about AB? Obviously last year, right? You got so close so many times. The European Open, you came on here. We talked about that. There's so many instances where you're like, oh, man, he's just right there. He's going to break through. He's going to break through. You finally come out and you win the very first event of this year. And the narrative all of a sudden is no longer like, does he know how to win? Can he win? The narrative becomes, okay, was that a fluke? Can he do yeah. it again? And now you've won three of the five. So now that is no longer the narrative. No one's thinking it's a fluke. And now the field goal has been pushed to being... Can he win a major? What are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's happening so fast. It's like, it's hard to like stay in the moment and then reflect really. But jumping into the major talk, it's like, I don't know. I could get 90th in every tournament, but I just really want to win the European Open. Like that's number mm -hmm. one on my list. <laughs> yeah. Because like now, yeah, now you are, you it's it's crazy to say you're a three-time champ because I know. It, a lot of people, it takes them so long, like kind of what Yuli was saying, like it takes them so long to add up. And, you know, you look at someone like Calvin who has been this like absolute monster of a, of a disc golfer these past couple of years. And I think he won three, I think last year, right? I think that was his total wins, I believe last year. And you've done it in five events. And so now you're going to have that, added pressure and do you like having that added pressure now going into these majors where before it was kind of like we just want to see ab win and like yeah. no one's really expecting that to happen at a major but now you are the odds out favorite 100 percent going into champions cup do you like having that pressure next to your name um i do like it honestly it's just like people saying that i should be winning these tournaments is just like a huge confidence boost to me also 
and just like going through and being like, okay, like right now I'm the number one ranked player in the power rankings. So it's just like a, it's just crazy how the mindset can switch after just one of these wins and just completely change me as a person. Yeah. Um, well, you know, what comes with winning is new fans, right? Like people are drawn to winners and you know, that is what's happening. You probably have had a bunch of new fans over these last couple months. Right. But the question is like, who's been your ride or die, right? Who, who is in your corner for these last couple of years being like, no, AB's my guy. Even when you're like, you know, getting down to the wire, not able to do it. Do you know who your number one fan is? Uh, is it Trevor? <laughs> Oh, there he is. Hey, how's it going, guys? <laughs> hey, you know, I heard Anthony was going to be on the show tonight, and I actually slipped our producer, Silas, 20 bucks, and he said he would let me on to ask a question. So I figured, you know, now's as good a time as any. Uh, I've got a question um, for you, Mr. Barella. Yeah. I've got a disc here. You know, I've thrown a lot of discs in my life, uh, especially Rocks, uh, the very beloved mid range. And I've got one here that was in my bag for, I don't know, four or five years, maybe it's quite old. And I've, I'm just wondering if, if you know about this disc, if you've seen this disc, this is right here is a, um, everybody, I hope you're, hope you're sitting down. This is quite beautiful. This is a Barella, oh, yeah. uh, 2015 rock right here, <laughs> uh, to commemorate his am worlds and us amateur titles in the same season. Okay. I got this disc. I'm pretty sure somehow from John Tompkins, I don't really know exactly how it ended up in my hand, yeah, but it's been in my bag for many of years. Uh, and my question is, so I've had this one in my bag for many years and it, it got beat in a little too much. It was my bread and butter. Anybody would tell you that's the disc I love the most. So my question is, do you have any of them? Uh, that's the first <laughs> part of the question. And if so, what is your price? Um, I don't personally have any of them, but my dad, I know my dad and my grandpa have, like oh. at least 10 or 20 of them. Oh. And they, they have that stamp on a Thunderbird, a Destroyer, and uh, that rock. Do not care about the other two molds, but I do want the rock. <laughs> um, <laughs> listen, you can tell them. You can tell them firsthand. I, Worlds this year is in my backyard. It's in Virginia. If you bring one down or across or wherever you might be yeah. at that point, <laughs> I would – I'd. Uh, it could fetch a pretty penny for him. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very needed in my bag. And um, yeah, well, I'm glad yeah. to hear there's some in circulation because I thought they might be extinct. Yeah, I can get you one, but you just got a caddy for me in exchange for one of oh. those. Okay, well, listen to this. So here's the thing. I sent you, I messaged you because I was like, it would be so fun to caddy uh, at Worlds because like you'll be here in Lynchburg. And I was like, that'd be yeah. so much fun. And then you started winning every single event with cupcake on your back. And I'm like, I've got to rescind the offer. Like I, I can't break this up. Like what's no, going to happen. Good. I didn't have cupcake on the bag at chess.com. So okay. That makes not, me feel better. Yeah. It's not, it's not like he's the, the deciding factor if I win or not, but he definitely helps me out. Great. That, right. Did he sleep through his alarm at that one? <laughs> no. He, yeah. He forgot. He missed his plane flight and didn't make it. All right. Oh. Well, all right. Well, I'll be there at Worlds. I'll get a Diamondbacks hat if that's what I got to do, and yep. we'll be set. Yep. Awesome. You know it. I'll see you there. All right. All see right. you, boys. Later, Trevor. All see right. There's there. there's number one AB fan, Trevor Staub. There. Awesome. Uh, I don't. That wasn't his. Uh, that wasn't his tour life de debut. But it's always nice to have Trevor bounce on. All right. Let's let's talk some disc golf. Let's let's bounce into this final round because this final round was uh, kind of crazy. You know, it's definitely unlike your other two wins. So you start off this final round with a lot of loose tee shots. Hole two, loose tee shot. Hole three, yeah. loose tee shot. Hole four, loose tee shot. Your second shot on hole four. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if people realize how, <laughs> how insane that shot is. If you throw a good drive, on that shot on, on hole four, like your second shot is like really hard still to even get to the basket. You yeah. got like maybe a hundred feet off. You're at the bottom of the hill. You've got this low limb trees in your, in your way. 
and you somehow get yourself a putt. Was that shot? Did like you just like whipping? I'm, I'm assuming you threw that as hard as you could or roughly as hard as you could. Yeah, somewhere up there, 80%. Do you, do you think that kind of like almost like shocked you into like waking up? Because after that, you start playing really well. Yeah, I don't. I was just like so mad that I missed that yap like off the tee that I was just like, all right, I'm just going to, I know I can reach this because I saw that 500 foot stake. And I was like, well, I've done 500 feet before. I, I can do it again. And then I thought it was going to be closer, but I guess I just got hung up in those trees. I thought I threw it perfect from down there, but that shot definitely gave me a little bit of momentum, but still after that roll away on six, it kind of just like stalled out again. And it's just tough to get things going in that wind. Yeah. Cause you threw, you threw a great shot on hole five, uh, which is, which is a pretty challenging hole. Yeah. And then we're going to, f- uh, fast forward a little bit here to hole 12. To me, this was the biggest difference between old AB and new AB old AB three puts that hole and yeah. you're out, you're done. Mm-hmm. Your, your tournament's over. You're done. Yeah. Did, did that thought ever, like, did you, did you have to fight anything that like, what w- was there a difference there that you, that you could tell was happening? Um, after I missed that putt for par, I, I thought like it was over. I didn't think that there were enough holes left for me to birdie out. So that drive on the next hole was just like, kind of like a, I don't know. I wasn't really thinking. I just kind of like threw it, whatever. And then got mm-hmm. up there to a putt. And then after my drive on hole 14, I looked at the scores and I think Gannon or I think Ben parred or something on hole 14, one of the guys in the lead parred the hole. And I was like, wow, if I can eagle this hole, I can pick up two here and then maybe get one on Calvin. And then after I hit that putt on 14, I was like, okay, I just, I got it. I can birdie out and at least push to a playoff. But um, yeah, it was a lot of checking the scores. And I knew I just had to keep pace with Calvin that because it was just going to come down to us two, I felt like in the end. Yeah, because I even think. I, I even think you in the past, like the putt that you had on hole 13, like the next hole, that wasn't a gimme putt. And I, yeah. I see that being like past AB. I'm thinking this is a coin flip. Like he yeah, might I'm make yanking, this. I'm team. yanking that right and rolling out of bounds for sure. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> you just drain it dead center here. And you're just, you know, you, you, and Yuli, if you want to jump in, I don't know if it's maturing. I don't know if it's growth or whatever, but just watching it. Cause I've had the pleasure of being able to watch you a couple times, uh, you know, playing with you in the first round of tournaments or whatnot. And I've seen like your skill level was so high. And then like you would make a mistake or so, and then you'd kind of just be out of it. Like, I don't see that anymore. Right. It's like, that's, and it's kind of scary for everyone now (laughs) that that's, that's not happening anymore. You, you want to jump in? Oh, you're muted. Uh-oh. Oh, there you go. I think one of the things that I, that I've seen that has really changed with Anthony is his demeanor on the course as well. It doesn't mm. look panicked. It doesn't look rushed. And when somebody has that type of pace <clears throat> to their game, I feel like you're staying in the moment kind of deal, you know, and, and you're not getting too far ahead of yourself. Of course, thoughts go through your head and things are happening. And, and like he, he said, yeah, I thought it was over but then I make the putt on, on 14. I'm with you on past a B would miss those putts. But I also think that past a B would be kind of moving ahead with his thought process of, Oh my gosh, here's my chance. And then the the moment's a little big Mm. and, and with the wins and you can interrupt at any time, maybe and be like, no, that's not, that's not true at all. But I feel like analyzing the situation knowing that he's done it before, like staying in the moment, like he's able to slow down and the, the result doesn't matter because that monkey's off his back from winning all, you know, already. Yeah. That definitely is like a thought that goes through my mind. It's like, I've done this. I've already won this year. Like I can choke away every tournament for the rest of the year. And just like, I'm, I'm still a winner though. Nobody can take that away from me. So yeah, it was just like, I do this like new thing where I'm just telling myself like these nerves you're feeling like you live for this. You've been preparing your whole life to feel these nerves and 
there's, those feelings are good. And now I've just found a way to capitalize on those nerves. And it's just been a pinnacle for me in my game. Yeah. So when you step up to the par five hole 14, you kind of, you address this a little bit, but I want to dive in a little bit more. You're thinking, okay, if I Eagle this hole and essentially birdie out, I have a shot, right? Like that's like, that's your thought process of like with where everyone's at, you're kind of looking at where Ben is. You're not at this, at this moment, Ben hasn't missed the putts. Ben hasn't gone OB on 18. Right. And so you're kind of thinking like for me to catch Ben, I have to play almost perfect throughout the last stretch of holes. So you end up playing hole 14 perfectly. You make that big Eagle putt. You're probably feeling like, all right, I've got a shot. How tight did you clinch your cheeks on hole 15? <laughs> um, I definitely threw it a little lower than I wanted. And it got that, it got like a weird wind bounce. And I was like, I don't know, but I was pretty confident I was going over like it. That Luna has so much glide. And like, if I'm going to leave it short on a 260 foot hole and yeah, I, it was, it didn't even cross my mind that I could leave it short there. So, okay. I'm just glad it didn't get a crazier wind bounce, but that was a little scary. <laughs> it might've looked worse from, uh, cause I watched Jomez of that. I think I actually even watched live of that part. I think that's when I started. I thought it was done though. It I, got that, that I, little yeah, drop. And I when was it like, got oh, the drop, I was like, that's in the water. I watched that video and then it, uh, Jerm was like, I don't even know how that went over. I was like, what are you talking about? I was going over the whole time. Come on. Yeah. I think the perspective just made it look like it was done as like halfway yeah. out of your hand. It's like, Oh my gosh. Um, so you get it on there. You make that putt. Uh, you throw an absolutely nasty second shot on hole 17. And, yeah. and at this point you are now six under through the last five, which I don't know if anyone had at that point had done that in that tournament. I think the way you won this tournament, it it's very scary for everyone, right? And and Ben kind of even alluded it to a little bit, talking. Ben was on earlier, and he was saying on hole 18, he's like, I was like, did you have any thoughts on like laying up and playing that hole for par? And he was literally saying, like, I saw how easy A B made that hyzer look. And so in his mind, he's like, A B's gonna birdie this hole. Yeah. And so you're already starting to have this impact. And I think the first two wins that you've had this season, you were kind of like the front dog. You were kind of fighting off people and yeah. you, you're fight. You fought off Ricky. You fought off Gannon. You fought off Calvin. I mean, you fought off like top tier guys. So it's like, all right, if he's in position to win, he knows how to do that. Now we see yeah. you're out of the tournament. You, you got no shot to win this thing. And then you somehow put together these final holes. Are you now going in to the next event and champions cup? Like, are you, is this the highest you've ever felt confidence wise? Yeah, of course. Uh, before the final round of Jonesboro at the fly mark, Gossage hit me with a stat. He's like, you know, you've been, you've had five consecutive rounds in first place on the disc golf pro tour. And I was like, wow, that's a crazy stat. And then now it's six rounds in a row. And I don't know. I just want to keep that streak going as long as I can. Yeah, that's that's a good one um, for sure. Oh, here we go. Casey says, thanks for signing my disc. And thanks to Yuli for taking a photo with my buddy at Oaks yesterday. My buddy lost his brother last year, and I haven't seen him that excited in a while. Best of luck at MCO. Oh, so there you guys go. Awesome. You guys making impacts on people's lives out there. It's, it's what it's all about. It's awesome to see. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 Yuli, do you have anything else with the Jonesboro before we move on? I, I just thought that was, that was one of the more entertaining finishes I've seen in a while. That was the back and forth. So many people no, in contention. That was a cool one to, to watch. No, I think you're right about the field better be on high alert because the other thing that I'm seeing is like you said, he's taken down dragons yes. right in in the field like ricky gannon and now um calvin all pretty much all three of of the of the tournaments but the other way is he's learning how to win in different ways mm -hmm. like that takes time you know what i mean like okay i won i led the whole entire time type thing and then he's battling with robot yuli and he's gone 
Okay. Well, he, <laughs> oh, he's back. Maybe We're on not. The same Wi-Fi. What's going on? <laughs> You're back now. Yep. There he is. Dang, that was gonna be a smash hit right there. I was gonna have you guys clip that, baby, and then it was going viral. Oh, damn it! Oh, you was heating up. I was rolling. Oh. I was rolling, oh, baby. No. Uh, <laughs> But no, I, I think that he's learning how to win in different ways, which takes a lot of people a lot of time. And to do it in the first three out of the five tournaments, like now he knows, hey, if I'm behind, it doesn't matter. Like these guys know I'm coming type thing. That's a confidence level that is earned over a long period of time. We saw yeah. Simon get a couple wins, but not really break through till way later on in his career. And then he had a crazy streak like this once he kind of got it done and he, and he won a lot of tournaments in a short amount of time. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how he handles the majors because that's a different level of pressure. And I think that's the next level that he's got to get to, but at, but at the same time, he's so young. You know what I mean? I'm so excited for the future with him and Gannon and the battles that we're going to see and the old guard not wanting to, to guarantee Ricky's out putting right now. You know what I mean? And, and Calvin's thinking about these things. Calvin's kind of in that middle, middle gap of old and new, I feel like, mm -hmm. uh, and Gannon doesn't like it, but the old guard's going to not be happy about it. You know what I mean? And they're going to want to take these young guys down. So I'm just excited about the future and, it, and it's bright. Yeah, I'll give you a little preview for uh, debate night that comes out on Thursday right here on Foundation Podcast YouTube channel. Uh, I was battling to, you know, these guys are telling me that, you know, oh, like when you get old, like you you just get really bad at disc golf. And I was like, these guys are like 28 years old. They're like, that's like, I'm like, you think AB is going to be bad at disc golf when he's 28? Like, I don't think so. Who's that? Doing? It's that, Brad, I don't know. What he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Try to come on the podcast. He wants that. He wants that invite. He's waiting for Yuli to invite him eventually. Um, okay, here's a good. Here's a good one for UAB. Who Who is the one guy that you haven't yet? Right. You You've You've gone with Calvin, Gannon, um, uh, Yuli. Ricky, Ricky. Yeah, I'll yeah. throw Yuli on there. It doesn't really count, <laughs> but you can throw Yuli on there. Uh, Simon. You, you've had a decent crew of people that you've battled down the stretch. Who's someone that you haven't battled down the stretch yet that you would love to be on lead card throwing bows back and forth? Uh, it's obviously got to be Macbeth. Yeah. The guy has a unmatched aura in the sport and I've seen him win so many tournaments and I'm just ready for my battle to go down with him. I know it's going to happen. I know he's not done, but yeah, I'm just super excited for that one. Yeah, if that happens at Worlds, that will be must-see TV. That is for sure. Everyone will be tuning into that. Um, all right, before we let you go, obviously, we got we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. It's it's you know you're you're used to it at this point because you got three of them. So, uh, what, what are we thinking here, trophy wise? How do we like this one? It looks like it was like a wooden shaped Arkansas with a metal plaque on it. Yeah. Did we also, um, I think, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I like, I like the, the state thing. Like I can connect my Texas one to that Arkansas one. It looks kind of cool. Oh, no. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I thought it was a fine trophy. It just said the men's pro open and I yeah. saw a bunch of people talking about that. Did we change Yuli? Do you know, are we no longer mixed pro ultimate? Are we just men? It says men's open champion. I thought it was mixed open. Yeah, it should be mixed open, but. All right. I, don't know, I saw that. I, I saw that too. And I was like, what the heck? We got, we got people rating it in chat. I love it. Um, uh, also, I was talking to Brixton, AB. You're going to have so many cards. It's, it's funny. He texted me saying like, yeah, because they, I guess each card, they add a trophy to the card. And he's like, yeah, we're yeah. going to have to start making his trophy smaller because they're going to run out of space <laughs> adding the trophies to your card. So go check That's those so out cool. if you haven't. AB's got some sweet uh, champions cards now yeah, at three, of, three events. Um, 
anything anything you got other stuff going on that you want to got one more question for yeah, him. yeah go yuli out of all the guys on tour and you might have we might have talked about this the last time you were on it on here, but who's your who's your rival that you're looking at and you're like, okay, as soon as I get in a in a battle with this guy, it's gonna be it's gonna be an absolute brawl. Who's that guy right now? Who do you hate? <laughs> no, no, no. Like who, who do, <laughs> most respectful of their game, really? Yeah, uh, it's got to be Gannon. I. We were talking last year. We played together more than anyone. Like, we played, like, 14 rounds, I think, together last year. And then this year, we've been having really similar seasons, and we're, like, talking about it. Like, after he won Waco, I was I literally told him, I was like, I'm the only one who can take you out, Gannon. It's me. <laughs> and we're just, like, <laughs> talking back and forth like that, all jokes. But, yeah, definitely Gannon. And then uh, Parker Welks, too, one of my rivals, I think, because – he got that win on me at the Shelly Star Memorial, and that was like that one really hurt. I don't know why. And then, <laughs> yeah, but I like I like battling with Parker a lot too. They could they could work with that. The, the no one really calls Gannon GB, but you could go the GB versus AB battle. Got a nice little <laughs> yeah. ring to it. Yeah. Could you imagine if Gannon like just next year came on tour? He's like, oh, I'm going by G- GB this year. That's, that sounds like I, something he would do. I know, and I would never call him GB. I would I would refuse to call him GB. I'd be like, that's ridiculous. I'm not calling you that. Um, uh, yeah, before you go, AB, anything you want to shout out? Any Anything down the pipeline that's happening with Discraft or any other sponsors or anything like that? Uh, yeah, we're going to have a commemorative Big Z nuke for the Ooh. Joesboro, which is it's a sick stamp. I'm so pumped Yuri, for it. Nuker. And then, yeah. Shout out to all the fans for supporting me and buying the jerseys. I can't believe how many I saw in Jonesboro last week. It's just, it's amazing. And I really appreciate it for all that. Hey, don't, don't forget about your number one fan. You know, don't, don't forget about yeah. the people that were there with you from the beginning. Those are the people yep. that matter. Um, but there you have it, folks. AB three time champion, five tournaments, insane. People are going to wonder, can he keep it up? I guess we'll find out this week at Music City Open. You can catch him playing at the Disc Golf Network. AB, thanks for joining. It's always a pleasure, man. Yep, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate you.